Today we will look into two outliners. Outliners are specific tools. You know, people misunderstand this, that those are bullet points that you can do there and you intend and detend these bullet points. But this is not what an outliner is. You can do this in nearly any app doing these outlines with the bullet points. But what a real outliner is, you will see today. And Workflowy is one of the most sophisticated outliners out there. Many people used it for years. But to be honest, this is coming to an end in my opinion. When I show you now the comparison between Workflowy and Tana with just a few simple things that I will do in there, I think you get the point. Let's dive in. Paperless movement, your productivity, your way. All right, here we are in Workflowy now, okay? So the thing is in Workflowy, you start at your home section and there you have your bullets, all right? What are bullets? Well, there are nodes, in fact. So you have node, a node, and then you have a sub node. However, if you open up this node and you click on this, you have a major node, a top node again, if you like, okay? So each individual bullet is a node called nodes, <laughs> all right? So it's not so easy to pronounce, but there's a difference. So these bullets are called nodes. This means that when you click on them, you can move in and you have this title on top and then you have the other nodes below. So when I keep going like this, you know, node three, whatever I take notes then on. The thing is in outliners that you not only have this. So now when I zoom in using a shortcut, you know, I can zoom into this and then I can zoom into this and I focus on now the taking the notes there and then I can zoom back out again until I'm on top layer. This is the magic about outliners that I can very quickly jot things down and rearrange them. So in Workflow, you could move these things up and down. I can go here, but I can only move them up and down inside this node. If I want to go beyond, it's not working. I can only move this on the level that I have in here. Okay, so let's switch to Tana and that's the first thing I want to show you. Here we have node make another node two and make this okay and then let's indent node three this whatever there is okay so now when i move these things around see i can go beyond that's already the first thing that i can very quickly move the things outside and obviously i can move these things around that's something for example in heptabase or other tools they have outlining in there it's usually very limited as you cannot freely move these things around and you cannot zoom into a node so it becomes actually a, a node itself it's not possible either all right but you see that's one of the subtleties between workflowy and tana in order to move things around but well there's a lot more that makes daily use of the tool just a big difference. Of course, I can quickly collapse these things. Another outliner thing, that's something I can do in Tana as well. But how do you take the daily notes? Let's say you're journaling. I'm not even journaling in Tana or something like that, but let's say you want to quickly jot things down, okay? Meeting minutes, okay? I have a meeting with someone and then I mention the date today, okay? This is nice meeting this is a nice meeting so what happens if i click on today it sorts it it filters all my notes by today it's great okay i can see now where today was mentioned okay it was mentioned in ai websites today and elsewhere the thing is this is not really a date because this was created a long time ago which was not today so I can add a date, in fact, and say today, and then I have a proper date. So the question is now, how can I access this date? Where is the overview of the dates? Am I missing anything? Did I update anything? Let me know in the comments below, right? Maybe I'm missing out points here. But if I click here, I can just change the date. And now what? I have a date there and I can now search for that date. So let's say today, and now I get this, okay? But uh, this is not a chronological order of events that I would like to have. Other than that, let's go back and let's make another note. I want to start every day on a new note, for example. So I could say 
daily notes, okay, and prepare, prepare this, and I make a thing where I say at date today, okay, and then I start writing my daily notes, and then next day I have to, you know, see how many steps I have to make in order to do this. Now these are the notes for tomorrow and so on. Let's go back to Tana how it works in there. Here we have a today section, all right? So you see already everything is built up in Tana based on nodes. So if I go to daily nodes, it is a node itself. And if I click on today, it's in a node 2024, you see, and there are all the weekly nodes. And if I go there, I can go to today and there I'm my today node. But this is automatically provided. That's something I would need to manually build up in workflow otherwise. So I'm already in the today date and therefore I already have the context whenever I need to find anything later on again. Now let's pretend that we are sitting in a meeting, I'm taking notes and I need to get reminded of something in three days from now, okay? So I have to be reminded something in three days. If you write it this way, then you see there's a date coming up, Saturday, June, boom. I instantly edit this by just making add and start writing or next week. Then it recommends me the week 27 or July the 3rd, starting with Monday. So you see how quickly I can do this without going through submenus and things like that. So what happens now that I edit the date here? Once this date arrives, June the 29th, let's go forward, 7, 27, 28, 29th. And I see, you see here, there's also my calendar connected to Tana, so I even have more context, but that's not something I will show today. So now we're on June 29th, but it's not appearing here. This is where you have to look into the references and keep them open, in my opinion, because now you see, oh, there is something I have written up three days ago and it's there. Amazing, right? So when I click there now, I can zoom in or I go to this day and I have to note about this and then you get reminded. That's already super powerful because every day you go to today, the moment this day arrives, you get reminded of all the notes that you have taken that are relevant for that day. Now let's go further. Let's say in Workflow, we take meeting notes, okay? So we say meeting notes. So let's move this up and then intend this. See, that's how powerful it is in our outliner, how quickly you can move things. Close this and now say, I meet a new person. I meet Tom and now we say, give it a hashtag person. So now I know this is a note about a person. So what I can do in workflow, I can then click on this person and what all it does, it just moves it up here and it filters all your notes by the hashtag person. It's something I can do in Apple notes and, and things like that as well. But this is, you know, first of all, I have always a hashtag in my note, which is something I don't want to see all the time when I have context. If I have a note, a note that is containing of more things than just a person. Let's say Tom Paperless Movement is a company. Okay, so now when I search for company, I get now this. I'm not saying that this is now actually a company. I'm just saying this note is a company. So I would need to make separate sections in order to split this. Okay, so I would take notes and then I have this. Now I have a person and I have a company created and whenever I search for companies, I will now get this in combination. I think this is very cumbersome, especially when we look at the superpowers of the super tag in Tana. And that's what we look in, into now. But before doing this, we could also say there's a new person, Tom. So you see, it's picking up people. Let's say friend. And now I have a tag friend but I cannot go further. It's not like that I'm creating the node friend, okay? So to me, it's pretty confusing to use this. In Tana, I would do the following, okay? I'm sitting in a meeting, I meet a new person, Tom Solid. I select this, I give it a hashtag and say person, boom. See how quickly this was, but now I keep writing. He is the founder of the Paperless Movement, again, I select this, say company, boom. Now I tag this company and now I can keep going. You see, I haven't done anything else. 
Now, when I click on Tom Solid, boom, what I get is a lot of fields. Well, that's not automatically generated, although we have AI and it generates fields for you. This is actually metadata of the person super tag. So when I click on person, I have a database, but in this database, you see, this is now all the custom fields that I can add to the hashtag person. So the moment I give anything in Tana, the hashtag person, it will automatically provide these meta fields. Going back, I have first name, last name. I can now click here on these buttons and AI will check out this name and extract it from there. I can now add the email and so on. So in the country, I can now pick a country that is part of the database country. Boom, here are all the countries that I dynamically added over time. So going back to today, that's that. When we go to paperless movement, you see now company. Oh, there's the website and employees that I could now link from the person's database to this company who is working there. You see, this immediately brings it to a complete different level when I'm dynamically taking notes just in my today journaling part here. But these notes, they live everywhere in Saitana. So now whenever I'm on an, another day, for example, I mentioned Tom Solid and here he is. Okay. And then you see something like this, 65, it tells this was, this person was referenced in many 65 different notes. So you see here mentioned in these notes and then the meetings that was there and so on. So this is very powerful if you have it this way. Whereas here, I'm lost. I can now say, okay, make a hashtag person search and make a star. And now I have this search start here, but it will just show me all the nodes that has the hashtags to person. It's not expanding on this uh, way Tana does. So Heptabase, for example, works in a similar way than Tana. And that's something we could look at in another video. If you like to watch this, let me know in the comments below and I check out Tana versus Heptabase looking at these particular features. If you're still using Workflowy and you think this is not worth it and I showed something wrong here, let me know in the comments below as well. I never stop learning as well. Maybe they made an update that I missed out there. And if you want me to show any specific features inside Tana, if you're the Tana user already, let me also know in the comments below. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And if you haven't already, subscribe to this channel so I can catch you up next time.